While Core Mario Kart hasn't exactly changed over the past 28 years, one can definitely argue that each installment in the series is somewhat unique from one another. Sure, the gameplay can slightly vary and so can a cast of characters, but honestly, what truly sets each Mario Kart apart the most in my opinion are the varied track selections. So in this mini-series, we're going to discuss the best and of course, the worst tracks in every Mario Kart game. Starting off with the worst, just because I want the second part to end with a bang, if you know what I mean, so yeah. Before I begin though, I just want to say that I won't be including Mario Kart Tour or any of the Mario Kart arcades in this list as I'll be focusing more on the mainline Mario Kart games. Regardless, I hope you guys will enjoy today's Mario Kart video, and if you do at any point, be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing. It's free, and you guys can always unsubscribe whenever you feel like it. Anyway, here are the worst tracks in every mainline Mario Kart game. When it comes to Super Mario Kart, most of the tracks are horrible. Like, completely horrible. However, let's figure out what the worst ones are. Mario Circuit? Nah. Bowser Castle? Kinda hard, but honestly, they're not the worst. Oh, oh, oh now these are the worst. Vanilla Lake 1 and 2. Literally, they're circles, but they're just not simple on paper. They're slippery, the ice cubes are the bane of my existence, I don't know why this one is so freaking hard. I've had so many memories of just failing these cups just because of these stupid levels. Nintendo seriously hit the ball out of the ballpark in this one because seriously, the lake, look at this, the jagged lines, ugh, hate dealing with them especially if you fall in. And then those stupid ice cubes, like I said, they're always in such annoying areas to deal with. Like, wh like what, what is this? What is that? Another one that I truly despise is Rainbow Road because literally there are no rails, which makes turns super difficult to deal with and you almost always fall off because of the CPU. They like to play bumper cars all the time in this game. The thwomps can also be a challenge to avoid because literally you are toast if you just touch them once. They're not the same from Bowser's Castle. They actually have these, these stupid like invincibility stars on them and you know, somehow they always get me. Like they smush me somehow every freaking time. Hate it. Now, Mario Kart 64 definitely has a lot better tracks than Super Mario Kart. It's definitely a huge leap from 2D to 3D, and it definitely shows. However, there are still some courses I don't exactly like. Actually, I do hate this one with a burning passion, and that one is called Toad's Turnpike. Now, this one isn't as hard as people say it is, but if you decide to play on Mirror, it is a different beast. Like, seriously? Oh, man. Cars and trucks go towards you in this version, making it extremely difficult to get by them. RNG can sometimes hate you if two trucks end up next to each other, too. So, good luck avoiding them if you don't have a star, because you know how slippery the handling can be in this game already. And this all equates to you probably getting a lower ranking because of the stupid fast CPU who are constantly rubber banding, and sometimes they just have their ability to miraculously avoid objects when you're far away from their vision. However, an honorable mention is, of course, da -da -da -da, Rainbow Road yet again. To be honest, I actually think this one is the worst Rainbow Road pick just because of how insanely long it is, which of course equates to it becoming bland after a while. It's not overly difficult if you learn the chain chomp patterns and there's no way for anyone to fall off, but if you somehow get a pretty decent lead from the pack, you're almost guaranteed a spot, especially if you do that leap of faith in the beginning. It's just simply an unfair track. Surprisingly, Mario Kart Super Circuit doesn't have a lot of terrible tracks. This game actually shines a lot because it does have a lot of tracks to choose from, and a lot of them can be pretty fun because of the bouncy mechanics. However, since this is a worst list, I will have to say that Riverside Park and Lakeside Park is definitely the worst ones. Again, they're not as bad when you actually play it, I just find this one to look the most bland and generic. I mean, I get it, it's in the jungle, but there's not many objects to avoid unless there's like fireballs, but you know, they're pretty easy to avoid. The turns, while not impossible, are a bit annoying to deal with too, so I guess that's also why, but again, I think the greatest thing to take away from this is just simply boring. Another one I can also mention is Bowser Castle 1. This one is so short, like you could finish this one in less than a minute if you really want to do. Like seriously, look how small it is on the map. I remember playing this for the first time ever when I was 5 or 6, and I was just in sheer utter disappointment. Double Dash is freaking awesome. There's just a lot of cool courses in this one, and you guys will definitely see a lot in the best portion. But when it comes to the worst, there's only two that I can think of that are kind of bad. Dry Dry Desert is one of them, and, you know, mostly because I'm not a huge fan of desert levels, and this one isn't actually any different from the rest. It's pretty short, and it has relatively easy turns. The pit in the middle looks intimidating, but it's easy to avoid. The biggest gimmick here is actually the tornado that only comes around the course, like what, two times? But other than that, it's sand and pokies. Definitely the most bland one in this game. The second blandest one is Mario Circuit because, well, I, I don't know, it, it doesn't offer anything new. Like, you already have Luigi's Circuit as a beginner course, but even that one has something cool, like being able to scheme other players coming around the other side. 
The best part of Mario Circuit is seeing who's stupid enough to hit the Chain Chomp or the Piranha Plants, but that's it. I would honestly rather play Mario Kart Wii's Mario Circuit instead, to be honest. Like, seriously, that one is just like a loop around, and that one still has more personality than this one in GameCube. Now, moving on to Mario Kart DS, I had to trigger my memories playing this game because I did play this game a lot since, again, like I said in my last Mario Kart ranking video, Mario Kart DS is amazing when it comes to single player experiences. However, I do have to say, when I did play this by myself, I remember playing Yoshi Falls and Koopa Beach 2 the least. Yoshi Falls mostly because, well, while it is a cool concept, it's definitely the worst because of it's so short and it's pretty much the same in every corner. Yeah, it's cool to see the Yoshi egg in the freaking middle, but other than that, I mean, you have road and some water falling. It's basically Bowser Castle 1, but, you know, with better aesthetics. This is one I yawn over so quick and it doesn't stand out. And this is pretty much the same with Koopa Beach 2. Not only is this so short and freaking bland, but it is in the Leaf Cup, which is the third cup in Mario Kart DS. I don't know why they put that there. It is not even that hard or difficult. It's just literally a beach, nothing else. And like I said, Super Mario Kart does not have the best graphics. So unfortunately, to me, this one is also relatively boring. Alright, so here we are now with Mario Kart Wii, and you guys know how much I love this game. There are a lot of ones I do like, however, there are also two that I hate the most. One being Warrior's Gold Mine because it's just so frustrating to race in. It's not particularly bad, I like the loops around them, but they can sometimes be very difficult to deal with, especially when you're playing online. Like, oh my goodness, I've fallen so many freaking times in this course, it just honestly became pretty much my most frustrated course in Mario Kart history. Like, seriously? That's probably the reason, the biggest reason why it's the worst one. My second personal pick would have to be Luigi's Circuit, and most of you Mario Kart Wii fans know why. At first, it is pretty chill and has awesome music, until you get to the last segment of the course, especially if you're in lap 3 of 3. For those who have played this online, you guys know what I mean, it is RNG land when it comes to the last segment. You could literally get a golden mushroom, bullet bill, or even a star, and you could pass pretty much everybody in the end because of how much of a gap it is from the road, to the off-road. You could pass a lot of people just from cutting through the off-road. And that is why everyone calls this RNG land, which makes this one pretty horrible. Second to last on this list is Mario Kart 7. Mario Kart 7 was amazing when I got this for my birthday, and it's mostly because the courses in here are freaking awesome. The characters are bad, but for the most part, it's a pretty solid and underrated game. However, there are two courses I hated playing even now. First up is Wario's Shipyard. For some reason, I find this one super forgettable. It looks like a cool concept driving basically in a sunken area with fishbone and broken ships revolving around like a mini fortress or castle or something, but I don't know, man. I guess it's because it's just so random. I don't know what it is. This is one of those that I simply cannot explain. Yeah, Waluigi is random too, but this one doesn't spark any interest or anything crazy. It's just very dark and I feel everything blends in together, making this one feel like it's just one huge blur. Another one I can say a little bit more about is Neo Bowser City. This one is also kind of completely random because, well, I mean, where does Bowser ever have a city? It's just, what? <laughs> the course itself has pretty much insane turns, and this is the most challenging one in my opinion because it's just so hard to not fall off with that one crazy section towards the end. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm glad it was definitely better in Mario Kart 8 as you can break pretty much while you're turning, but yeah, since this is the Mario Kart 7 version, not so much. It's also pretty dark and raining all the time, which makes me feel pretty gloomy when playing it, so... Again, these two courses, I think, honestly just look very, very gloomy. And finally, we get to Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Again, I'm packaging this one together because, well, they're the same freaking game. The worst by far is Bone Dry Dunes. I cannot express how much I hate this one. I don't know how anyone in the world can like this. If you do, you suck. JK. But seriously, this is the worst sand course in Mario Kart freaking history. The layout to me is simply garbage and is even worse than Neo Bowser City in 200cc. Every corner to me just also feels like a dull moment. No matter what path I take, I don't feel any excitement and every time I hit this piranha plant or bump into this wall, I honestly just get pissed off. Yeah, I really don't like Bone Dry Dunes. However, when it came down to selecting another one, I actually had a hard time picking what was like, I guess, the second worst. In Mario Kart 8, to me, a lot of the courses are just alright. None of them are really that spectacular, and none of them are really that bad. However, if I were to choose a second pick just to choose, Donut Plains 3. Don't get me wrong, this one looks amazing, especially going from the Super Nintendo to the Wii U or Nintendo Switch. But it is still kind of bland due to it being, again, from the original Super Nintendo. And the worst part is the last set of items is pretty much laid out in the halfway point of the course. Like, what? I don't get that. 
So if you end up getting a crappy item in the last lap, good luck coming back. It's probably not happening. So many people just cut you off in the end too with that shortcut. So yeah, if you get a coin, good luck. Expect to get past, pal. And now I turn to you guys. What are your worst tracks ever in the Mario Kart series? Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you guys think. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video, and if you did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more Mario Kart related videos. Seriously, there's going to be a lot of Mario Kart videos coming into this channel, so if this is something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe. Before I go, I just want to shout out to Ordrive84 and as well as Jack and 64 boy You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for those Twitch channel points, and of course for being fans of the Jigsaw Fam Discord channel, and of course, community. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, my dudes.